Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is an internet course called Introduction to Microprocessors. I'm using the following textbook, and we're on chapter 5. This is the last section, Indirect Addressing. This is actually the last section that I'm going to cover on assembly language. After that, I'm going to do a, a slide, a, a series on some of the peripherals inside of the PIC-16 and 18 microprocessors. And then I'm going to switch to an, an introduction to C and the PIC-18 microcontrollers. Indirect addressing. Instead of embedding a memory address into the instruction word, like the move WF 0x23 command, the number stored in the file select register can be used as the address for the data, data memory. <clears throat> so here in this example, we're using 0x23 is the address where the W register is going to go into the data inside the W register will go into that address uh, uh, location. So, so there, there's another option instead of embedding and this uh, 23 has to be embedded inside of the actual opcode. So there's, a, there's another way to do that especially when you're going to save a list of data or large amounts of data where you want to increment the address each time. So this method where you store the number, you store the address in the file select register is called indirect addressing. Now if we set the file select register equal to 23, then the new command using indirect addressing would, would be move wf indf, where indf has to be defined using the equate statement. You have to set indf uh, equal to I'll show you in a minute what you have to set equal to on the next slide. But just remember for now that INDF has to be declared. Oh, okay, so to set the file select register to 23, we, we have to use two commands. Initially, you use two commands, and then after that, you can just increment the file select register. So that's how you get the, the advantage. So to initially initialize the file select register equal to 23, we just use move literal to w. 0x23. Remember, 0x just means this number is going to be in hex, hexadecimal. And then move WF FSR. And again, the text FSR needs to be declared as well. And I'll show you in a minute how to do that. <coughs> so these two um, need to be, the FSR and the INDF need to be declared. That's simple to do. We're going to set those equal to 0. The INDF is going to be equal to zero, and the FSR is located at address four. So these are special function registers that we already have predefined, and we looked at that in chapter two, and they have specific memory locations. Remember that when you type up this code, that this line, the very first character needs to be at line, at the, the very first position in your code. So you need to tab need to backspace all the way to the very first position and, and start typing because this is going to be a label. INDF and FSR needs to be a label in your code. Here's a memory map. Remember when we looked at mem the, uh, the special function registers, this was a table we looked at in chapter 2. Notice that there was a location called indirect address 00. So that's why we're calling INDF we're equating that to zero. And then the file select register, we're equating to four. So that's why we're doing those things. So how does it work? Graphically, let's show a little bit of a pic pictorial diagram of how it works. We'll look at this code in a minute, and I'll show you how it works on the MPLABX uh, environment. In the code that we're going to look at, we're going to have these commands move literal to w23 so 23 goes into the w register which this shows a 3 but um, just imagine a 23 here and then move w to f to the file select register so what we're doing to set up this indirect addressing is we're moving 23 into the file select register which remember was location 4 so if you look at this table, we're moving, we're moving 23 into this position to the file select register. Now then you have some more code, and then you have move wf indf. 
So whatever is in the W register, let's say that there's the value of 3 in the W register, this command will actually take whatever is in the W register and move it into the location that's pointed to, the address pointed to, by the file select register. So the file select register is 23. It's pointing to this address, 23. So this data of 3 is going to go into whatever this is saying. So if this is 24, it's going to move it into 24. But in this case, it's 23, so it's going to move it into this location of 23. So that's how it's work. That's how it works. Now you may have some more code. Then you have this increment command, increment file select register to 1. What that's going to do is it's going to increment this to 24. Now, the next if next time you come across this command, it's going to move the W register into this location. So that's the power and the beauty of using indirect addressing. <clears throat> and here's an example code that we're going to, that's in the textbook with Tim Wilmshurst. It's the FIBO plus storage.asm code. It's example 5.12 and exercise 5.12. Let's look at that really quick. So here's the code. What I had to do to get this code was I went to the website, Designing Embedded Systems, embedded-knowhow.co.uk, and then we go to Chapter 5. I actually had to grab the, um, not the flashing LED, it was a previous section of code. Yeah, the full Fibonacci program. So I believe it was 5.3. And I took that and just edited it uh, to match the, what was on page 143 of the textbook, which is also seen here on the slides. You can, if you have YouTube, you could uh, hopefully uh, pause this and look at the differences between what's on the website, and then you can make the changes here. <clears throat> So, what I had to do is I added these two lines. This was the um, initialization. INDF, we're going to equate to 0. FSR, we equate to 4. Okay. I added this line here. Move, F, move WF20. Added this line. Move WF21. 22 added these two lines and then I added let's see all the way added all of all of this okay so this is the new part of the code <clears throat> now I already have this program set up and built now I talked about how to do that in previous lessons so I'm not going to go over that and I believe I'm just going to reset my process to make sure I'm, a, I'm at the very beginning I'm going to start to single step through the code. <clears throat> now I also added some some watch windows. Now remember, I, I taught you how to add the watch windows, but you do have to remember you have to go to setup and go to global options. You have to s set this build in absolute mode. You have to have that check marked. And the only way you can do that is, is by stopping this. And then you'll be able to add these INDF FSR, FIB1, and things like that. So make sure that you, you do that. Now that's a single step through here. Now I also added a breakpoint at line 43. I want to add a breakpoint at this command where the indirect addressing is taking place. Move WF INDF. Because we want to see what happens at that point. Okay? So let's Let's single step through this and see what happens. Now, anytime this changes red down here, that means something has changed. Now, we're going to move WF to FIB0. That's, that's not any different than we were doing before. Now, we're going to move WF20. Now, we're going to move literal to W1. Okay, so these aren't any different. Now, we're going to move this value into 21. Still, that's not really much different than what we've done before. 
here's the different different part with the indirect addressing. We're going to move literal to W23, okay, which we talked about on this slide. We're going to move literal to W23 into the file select register. So that's where we're setting up our file select register. Notice that W register got a value of 23. Now we're going to move that value to the file select register. Currently the value is 0 in there, so let's hit single step. Now the file select register has a value of 23 in it. So now this is set to be equal to 23. <coughs> Yeah. So let's keep single stepping through. Now what it's going to do is it's going to add the first two fib numbers. You got fib one and two, which is one and one. It's going to add those and it gives a result of two. So that's going to be the next in the series is going to be two. And that's stored currently in the W register. It's going to bit test to see if we're overflow. We're not going to be, so we're not going to worry about that right now. Now we're going to move that into fib temp, which is another register, which I don't actually have in the watch window. Now we're going to save this using indirect addressing. So I'm about to. So when I click single step, it's going to move WF to the INDF using this new command that we came up with. Move WF INDF. So it's going to it should move whatever's in the W register to this value of 23 because the file select register is selected as 23 at this moment. You can see down here the file select register is, is 23. So let's see and see what happens. Now this is register 23. Right now there's a zero in there. Let's see what happens when we hit single step. Okay, see so now the value of 2 went into 23. So it worked. Now, and so the rest of the code just really just repeats over and over again. Um, this is the next command is just going to test to see if we're at the top of the range, which we're not going to be. So let's just skip through that. Now the the other command we talked about was we're going to increment the file select register. Remember on the slide we talked about we increment the file select registers. So we change this to 24. So now we're going to be 20, pointing to 24. Now that's the command that we're currently on. So let's look at the FSR register. It's currently at 23. Now when we do the increment command, it should go to, to 24. Well, let's single step. Notice that it moved to 24. So now we're, we're set up for the next iteration of the code to run. So now if we run through this, it's going to go through a lot of code, a bunch of delays and all that. But since we have a breakpoint set, we're just going to go ahead and hit run again. It's going to run through all this code until it gets to our indirect addressing again. So let's just hit the green run button. Okay, so now it went all the way through the code. Now let's single step again. The next command, okay, notice that it was move WF indirect ad, indirect addressing. Notice that the location at 24 now changed to 3. So that's 1 plus 2 equals 3. So it's, it's working. Our code is working just exactly the way that we had it drawn here. So this this value went to uh, <coughs> yeah to 3. Which actually this should be this should be 3 and this should be 2. So I had this wrong on the slide. <clears throat> so that's the way it should be. Anyway, that's if we keep if we keep running through this code, you can see that um, this number down here will keep 24 and 25 and 26 is going to continue to give us the the next number in the series. You can see that 2 plus 3 is 5. We just got a 5, and if we run it again, 3 plus 5 is 8. So that's the Fibonacci series. So everything is working. So we're storing all this data up into our uh, file registers. And you can also see, if you go to the file register view, you can see here that you can see your code is being stored up. The Fibonacci series 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, uh, 0, D, 1, 5, 2, 2, 3, 7. That's the Fibonacci series. So I mean, remember, this is in hex. But I appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing everyone for the next uh, internet video series. Thanks.